Okay, everybody, what's going on? I read a lot online about I have got cracked and old and faded graphics on my motorhome. How do I get how do I fix this problem? Well, I'm going to show you how I fix one of ours using this and this. Details coming up on RV Street. Okay, let's get right to it. There are three ways to deal with faded graphics. The first one is just remove it. Just take it all the way off. We had a big maroon graphic here. It went from here way down there. It was about 10 feet long. It was all cracked. It wasn't worth saving. So I took a 3M eraser and I got rid of that, then compounded, polished, and waxed. You can't even tell that that graphic was even there. But I did that four years ago. Then last year, I tried a second way to deal with a, a bad graphic. And that was this long black one. Again, we had a black one that was cracked, faded. So I went and designed a new graphic in Adobe Illustrator, took it to Fast Signs, and they output that graphic to, for me in their high-end UV resistant vinyl uh, material. They laser cut it in the exact shape that I wanted. I brought it back here, peeled off the back, and put those two spots there. But for today, we're going to deal with a new way, the third way, and that is paint over the graphic. You're going to need some quarter inch or three sixteenths auto detail tape. This it comes off in small little strips and it's easy to go around your old graphic and just outline it. Then you follow up with adding, I have three sizes here, one inch, inch and a half and two inch. And I continue to outline the border of the graphic with these. Then I cover the whole motor home around with paper. All these items here, by the way, were bought at Home Depot. And this paper is to eliminate overspray, as you will see shortly. Then the painting is actually a three-step process. One, I'm using a gloss white paint and primer, all in one. This I'll use to cover the old red and give me a base blank uh, canvas to work with. Then I'll follow up with this gloss protective enamel maroon, uh, burgundy. This color, believe it or not, was so close to our OEM paint. I was like, man, this is great. White off the shelf, maroon, uh, burgundy off the shelf. And then I followed up with step three of several coats of clear. And this is the final result. I also did this on the back graphic last week uh, when uh, we were at another park. So follow me here. I'm going to take you through all the steps of how we did this and then I'll have some finishing comments. So as you can see, I have finished the back graphic here. And so now I'm going to go around here to the driver's side and I am going to do this bottom red one down here, up here, and this one here, which is on our slide. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to outline the graphic with the auto detail tape because this tape is very narrow and I can get it right up onto the edge. And this is pretty tight, so I'm going to have to do this in several pieces. It looks like it's going to be about four pieces. So I'll just tear off another piece and start at a different angle and just keep pushing and very little getting around this little circle right here and so on and so on but once you get off once i got off of that uh, radius there you see it goes pretty quickly so i've got here to the end and i want to make a really sharp cut right there so i take my razor knife i push that in that corner 
And then I take my razor knife and just cut that so I get a nice clean finish up to this other piece here. Now another thing to remember is when you're putting on this detail tape, after you've done it, you want to come all the way around with your finger and really make sure that that's tight, that it's fully adhered to the motorhome. Because if you don't, if it's not tight there, as I spray, some, this will become loose and you can get some spray up underneath that tape. So you want to make sure that this is good and tight. Okay, so you can see how I've finished all of the quarter inch uh, detail tape to totally go around the border. Now I'm applying the blue tape because I want to make sure that I have enough up here to now put paper beyond that. And I wanted to show you what I do here is I just start this blue and I just kind of overhang, overlap I should say, on that green tape. And I just keep going like this. And this gives me a wider border to, to put my paper on and to tape off the motorhome from overspray. Okay, so there you go. I have it outlined with green tape and then another overlap layer with blue tape. And now I'm going to go and start on this one. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to cover the rest of this with paper. We're going to go up all around here and paper off for any overspray. And then I also took my wheel cover, turned it inside out, and put it over the tire to protect the tire and the rim. So we're going to get started papering off the rest of the motorhome. Okay. So, as you can see, we have papered off all around the graphic and then came up again here to the window and down to the bottom. At this park, I purposely pointed the nose of the coach to the east. That puts the uh, passenger side to the south and this side to the north because the wind is blowing from east, I mean from south to north. So I'm doing this side in this park because I'm in the, on the north side and there's no wind here. When I did the back, I did it when the back was to the north also. I was parked in a different uh, orientation. So I'm accounting for the wind. And now the next step is, is to sand and rough it up. So there's two types of sandpaper I'm using here. I'm using a uh, 220 and a 400. So the first thing that I want to do, and I'm just going to say this up front, um, I could have compounded and did all kinds of work here to get this as smooth as possible, but because of the way that that back one came out, I'm not interested in getting this perfect. All I'm interested in is getting if I run my nail across this crack, I can feel where it drags and hits that just a little bit, okay? But these aren't nearly as bad as the ones in the back. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this 300 and I'm just going to come in here and I'm gonna get the main part of these cracks, okay? I'm gonna go right over these cracks and take out that, that where it hits, okay? because by the time I put several coats of primer and then, and then color and then clear, these are gonna be about 90% full. And when you look at this graphic from about five feet away, you're not even gonna be able to tell that anything is under here. But if you get really close, you probably will see a little remnant of these cracks. But again, for me, I don't care. This doesn't need to be perfect. When I'm all done with this, this thing is going to look 100% better than what it does now. So I'm just going to continue sanding like this, just going over these cracks, taking that ridge out. And then when I'm through with that, I'm going to take my 400 
and go a little bit finer. So I'm gonna continue doing this and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so I'm continuing to sand here. We're only talking about maybe five minutes here, okay? I'm not, I'm not trying to take that all the way down. But if you'll notice, I'm also going all the way around the outside, even where there isn't cracks. And I want to rough this up, just scuff it some. And then that way, when I come with my primer and other paint, I I'm giving it an, a, a surface that it'll adhere to. Where right now, you see, this is not scuffed, this is scuffed. Paint will adhere a whole lot better to this than it will this. So I'm going over all of this in addition to the cracks. And then I'll come back and I will do this one also. All painted surfaces will be lightly sand. The cracks a little bit more, trying to take that little ridge out of there. But I'm scuffing it here to give that new paint a better surface to adhere to. Okay, so that part's sanded. Let's wipe this off and let's see what it looks like. You see how that dust is coming off of there? So, get all that dust off. You see? Fold the rag over. I'm using a wet, damp cloth here and getting that dust off, getting them out of the cracks. And now I have a clean surface. It's sanded and it's ready, this side's ready to go. One thing I wanted to point out here is that we started this at 10 o'clock this morning. It is now 20 to one. Like any paint job, the prep work is always the hardest work. Painting is actually very easy, but the prep work is always the hardest and takes the most time. So this side here is ready. Let's move on to the other side. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, if you remember I showed you in the beginning of the video, I'm using three products. A paint primer combined. Okay, it's a white gloss paint and primer. I'm going to use this for the first couple of coats. So I'm going to spray now over all of the red. I'm going to let it dry for about an hour and I'm going to sand, lightly sand again. And then I'm going to give it a, a, probably a couple more coats. And then tomorrow we're going to do the red. So if you'll come, there are two types of paint cans. There's one that has this trigger style and then there's the kind that has the push button on top. The trigger style here works the best. So I've got the Rust-Oleum Universal Paint and Primer all in one. And this gives a really nice fan spray of about maybe 8, 10 inches. And you just want to make sure that you've shaken it up good. And then you do a little test spray. Okay. So you're going to want to be about 8 to 10 inches away here and you do not want to lay down a lot of paint. You want to do it lightly in several layers. So it's just very lightly like this. If it starts to splatter, you can turn the can upside down and clear the spray. But don't worry about that because we're going to be sanding anyway. I'm doing this white for two reasons. Number one, I want to block out the existing red. The second thing I want to accomplish is I want to fill in the cracks. So you can see here, this kind of flaked up a little bit, but I'm not worried about it because this is all going to be sanded. So that's our very first light coat. Now we're gonna come over here and do the same thing. So whenever you buy paint, <laughs> the, 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 the advice here is, if you think, well, that'll probably take me a, a can to do that, buy two. Because if one starts spitting, you're gonna need that other can as a backup. Now, I wanted to make a point here. 
that I bought this at Home Depot because with our coach, I was able to find this, this primer and paint in one will block and fill perfectly. And I was able to find um, a maroon color paint that was so darn close to our original. I thought, oh man, this is perfect. But some of you are going to want to have it exact. You're, you, something happened to your coach or you have a graphic that you want to do exactly the way it used to be. You're going to have to go get that paint matched. You're going to have to take a sample to a paint store and have it match perfectly and put it in cans. And then you, you can do it that way. But for me, again, I'm not looking to recreate factory here. I'm looking to get these scratches out of here and the cracking, and I just want to bring it back to almost perfect. I don't, for me, I don't need to be perfect. All right, here we go with a new can. You see how smooth that is? Look at that fan. That's a perfect fan. Let's go back over here and get this again. And let's do this one again. And one time right here. And let's go back over here. Because in five minutes, this is tacky enough where you can come back with a second one. And that's it. Okay, well, it's day two. Uh, 9.15 in the morning. And you can see this white base coat here uh, really really came out nice and so now I'm going to take this 400 uh, sandpaper very fine and I'm just going to gently just take off that fresh uh, paint um, roughness I don't really know how to explain it but you know when you spray um, a surface after it dries, it's just slightly rough. So what I'm trying to do now is just take that little roughness off very lightly. And look at all those cracks, man. They all filled in almost 100%. I'd say about 90%. I'm really happy with that. Okay, so after we sanded with that 400, we take a damp cloth and wipe off all that small amount of dust. Now, if you remember, I told you earlier to try to get the paint cans with the trigger on the front. But this color, which is a uh, Rust-Oleum gloss maroon, uh, burgundy, is incredibly how close it matches the factory uh, graphic color. But it didn't come with a trigger. It came with a button type applicator and I really didn't like that I was like oh man but I had no choice so I went ahead and bought two cans of this in case you know this one starts to spit and spatter too but I was kind of surprised as long as I stayed back you know 10 12 inches it, it gave a it gave a good fan so you see when you get close you see how narrow it is but if you come back a little bit, it spreads it open. So that's how you have to use this. So let's go ahead and put on our first coat of color very lightly, just like we did in the beginning with the, uh, with the white. We're not trying to get full coverage here. We're just trying to get a base coat on here because we don't want to go too heavy and cause runs or anything like that. Okay, we're getting ready for the second coat. And we're gonna to try to be filling in some more of these white areas. Again, staying away and just lightly doing a coat. We're still not worried about getting full coverage. Because if, if we do that too early, you're gonna get runs. Then you have to start sanding and it just complicates the whole process. It's better to just do several light coats and build it up than one big heavy one. 
Okay, so we're getting ready to do the last coat. Um, I've done about seven coats so far. These are the light coats that I've showed you in the beginning and just building and building and building. And there you have it. And now we'll just wait until tomorrow to put on the clear. Okay, so after all of the um, burgundy coats that I laid on here, somehow I thought we had shot how I put on all the clear. And as I got into do editing, there was no such footage. I have no idea what happened. But it was the same process, okay? I did the base coat white, several layers. I did the maroon, the uh, burgundy color, several layers. And now I came back with the Rust-Oleum Universal Clear. Same exact process. Light coats, building it up, building it up. And it was a total of about seven or eight coats of that. Let it cure overnight. And then we went in and started taking off the tape and the paper. And to give you guys some context, we are in the park here across the street. And you can see the coach right there. So what we did is we backed up into our site so that the driver's side is to the north. The wind is coming out of the south. So I'm backed up here to the fence. The roadway is right there. But this side here is all protected from the wind. Okay, well, it is... Thursday morning. This is the fourth day um, and the final day. And as you can see, I've taken off all the paper uh, or most of the paper and uh, it sat here all night and has cured and the paint now is nice and dry. We're going to go ahead and take off the fine part of the tape that gets really close to the newly painted area. And I wanted you to see how I do this because when you pull this tape, this blue tape, and then I get, remember the green, the little fine green tape that I used? Well, by painting all those layers of white and red and clear, sometimes it'll build a little skin across the paint and that um, quarter inch tape. So you don't want to just come in here and just start pulling it off real quick because if that skin is built across there, it could tear the paint. So at this stage, we're going to be careful. And I'm going to look and see here where I want to start. And I think I'm going to start here. And I'm just going to very carefully work my way down to that quarter inch green tape, that detail tape. Remember that? I'm going to go down and get right. See there? There's the part of that green tape right there. And you can see it again here. And I'm pulling this blue tape very carefully. I don't let it come way out here like this. I keep it tight because I don't want that to possibly tear into my paint. Because if it did tear into the paint, I'd have to come back and touch it up with a Q-tip. So here we go. I want you to see right here. You see how this is, this is where I took on the outside, okay? You gotta be very, very careful. And sometimes if it starts to tear that paint, I'll just take my razor knife and I'll just get it, to, I'll get it just to start so it will not pull. See, it is pulling right there. So I'm just gonna hold that and pull that down. I'm actually right here. This is, a, this is an area I know that got really thick. So I am just going to help that cut right there. Okay. Okay, so 
you can see we got all the tape off and you can see that there's some little overspray in here this is where that tape you know it, it kind of flares up after it's been outside for two or three days sometimes a little pink and get up underneath there and I got a little down here also so once you get all the tape off you can just take a q-tip and put some thinner on it and come on in here and just do some t just do some cleanup and this will eventually get it off you can see this all cleaned up really nice up in there so is this whole painting graphic perfect no but boy it sure is a whole lot better than it was now we're going to move on on over to here once i've done all of the coats of the clear over the paint and removed all the paper all the tape and all that i follow up with two coats of rejects i have uh, replaced waxing our coach with this product rejects this product is way better than wax it is easier to put on easier to put off and or to take off i should say but uh, two coats of this blocks 100 percent of all uv rays protecting these graphics on a motorhome is really the most important thing that's why these went south in the first place the previous owner that we bought the coach from did not wax this like he should have and those graphics went south in about three years that's not going to happen this time not the way i take care of this coach and using this so that's it guys this was one of my top priorities when we came down to rgv this winter was to knock out this graphic and the one on the back i did this one in one park where we currently are, I did the back graphic in the previous campground that we were in. Each one took me a total of three and a half to four days to do. One day to tape off and prime. One day for color. One day for uh, the, gloss cov the, the gloss finish coat. And then a half a day, maybe a little more, to take all the paper off and do the final cleanup. I hope this how-to uh, video on how to fix your faded and cracked uh, graphics will help you. In the meantime, this is RV Street. Stick around. <laughs>